It doesn't have to be difficult to create stunning and intense self-portraits. Um, it's something that doesn't take a lot of equipment and you don't have to go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars on getting a setup that works for you. Self-portraits is something everyone has access to. Just pick up your phone and you can take a selfie, basically, but the art of self-portraits is so much more than just snapping a quick selfie, but it doesn't have to be difficult. I want to help you out creating some amazing self-portraits of your own and in doing so I'm going to show you how I create, have created some of my self-portraits. I'll show you my simple setup that frankly wasn't that expensive and we'll get into the depth of things. But let's first talk a little bit about why self-portraits. As long as it's been art, there's been self-portraits. and. Some of our greatest painters in the history of mankind have all created amazing self-portraits that stood out. Self-portraits is a form of expression. It's a way an artist can cope. Right now, especially, it can be really difficult to find your creative outlet and really go into depth with your work. And self-portraits, for me, has been a way of doing that. It's been a way to use my my visual expression to kind of put a picture on how I'm feeling inside. Um, it's it's right now it's a lot of turmoil and showing that turmoil in portraits is really really important to me. Not just to show others but also for myself. It's a way for me to deal with my emotions. Now self-portraits is not just a way to express your emotions, but it can also be an amazing learning tool for you to experiment a little bit before you take your techniques and apply them to a model. This can be a concept that you're working on, a specific theme, it can be a way of testing out colors, of light. Let's say you got a new lens that you want to try out and you're not entirely sure how it's going to work yet. Before taking it to your, to your shoot, you can test it out on yourself. You can really play around with it, with it and you don't have to feel bad about prolonging the shoot because you're the model. So how do you go about creating amazing self-portraits? It's not that difficult and it doesn't have to be expensive either. Frankly, a lot of the gear that most amateur photographers have is something that you can use. So my setup for today is incredibly simple. It, and it's, it's frankly, it is not counting the camera and the lenses. It has cost me less than two hundred dollars. I kid you not. Now my my lightings in on, in, on themselves have cost around fifty dollars. These are two constant constant lights with uh, soft boxes that I've gotten. I got them second hand for someone who had, who had really cared for this whole uh, whole setup that she had. Uh, but wanted to get rid of it, so she sold it for 50 bucks. Now this setup usually, I don't know how much it costs on Amazon, but it's one of those setups where you have two lights, constant lights with, with soft boxes, and a backdrop setup usually with uh, some kind of muslin fabric, like a green screen or whatnot. Um, and it's really, from new even, it's really, really inexpensive. And most people can play along there. But if you don't have any kind of professional lighting, now doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be that difficult you can also just go outside or use a window you can you can play around with it a little bit and experiment um, and I think the most important thing is just doing it you don't have to think too hard just get out there and play around for my camera I'm using my Canon EOS R mirrorless and I got that around I would say November so it's a fairly new camera for me so Ever since the, ever since starting to doing self isolation, I haven't had a chance to play around as much with my camera. I've used it on clients, and it's been great, but I haven't really got to, gotten to know it yet. And so that's part of the reasons why I am doing these self portraits. I want to get to know my equipment really, really well, and I want to create some beautiful, beautiful self portraits that, frankly, I can look at and, and feel really, really pleased about. Not just from a, a personal 
I like to look at myself level, but also from a from an artistic level. The lens I'm going to use today is an 85 millimeter, and the only reason why I'm not using my 50 millimeter lens is because I'm using that to shoot this video. Now for the location. Well, the weather today outside has been kind of dreary. It's been raining non-stop. It's been dark and grey and if it hadn't been raining I would actually have really enjoyed shooting outside. I am not taking my gear out in the rain. I'm just not doing it. So I'm gonna shoot right here. This is my kitchen and it's not very big as you can tell. I am sitting almost all the way over to the other end of it. Um, there's maybe a meter meter and a half between me and the window right now and <laughs> it's kind of cramped it, it, it is it is I can almost touch both sides of, of uh, my walls when I stretch out my arms so but this is here where I create some of my favorite portraits I really really enjoy doing very very simple setups that don't require require a ton of time and don't require a ton of gear it's just incredibly simple. Now if you want to do a bigger setup you're free to do so. If you have the space, if you have the equipment, play around with it. Go for two, one, two, three, even four lights if that's what you want to do. Put gels on it. Just have fun with it. But for today, for what I'm going to show you, it's going to be one beauty disc and it's going to be constant. I do have speed lights that I love to use. I just really really enjoy playing around with steady light and i want to show you guys what you can create for something incredibly cheap to trigger my camera today i am using my canon app on my phone now i kid you not the camera i shot with before my canon r was a 5d mark ii i love that camera it's 10 years old i got it right as it was being discontinued from the stores and I still use it. It's an amazing camera. It doesn't have Wi-Fi connection, so when I've been shooting with that, I use a remote trigger and that's been really, really fun. Um, but now I have Wi-Fi connection, so I can really play around with it and I can I can use my phone to focus and I can I can trigger it from there. I don't usually do that as much, depending. I mean, I sometimes I trigger it from my phone, other times I actually trigger it straight from the camera. Um, I just kind of... <laughs> I put a timer on it for a couple of seconds and that's usually for when I go up close. Um, else I just press on the screen on my phone and it does all the work for me. It's wonderful. You can go without both a, a phone app obviously and a remote trigger. You can always set your camera to a 10 second timer and then you have to run back and forth. Now. Back when I started doing self-portraits, I did that and <laughs> it's a ton of work. It's fun, but it's a ton of work, so be prepared, be prepared to do some running. But let's get to it. Now, I want to uh, look a little more lively in my portrait that I'm doing right now. So I'm just going to get started on putting some makeup on and I'm also going to set up um, lighting. So hang in and let me show you how I do it. Now while you're watching me set up and everything, please subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the like button. I am really really excited about creating more content for you about how I do my portraits, not just my self-portraits and how you can create beautiful emotional art with very minimal equipment or with more elaborate equipment. Subscribe and we'll have some fun. Okay, so we are all set up and as you can see, it's a little dark right now, <laughs> but let me just try to do this real quick and show you what I'm sitting in. Whoop. This is my V-flat and I am using that as my backdrop right now. And so here, over here, I have the very inexpensive softbox I told you about, a constant light is actually helping me light this video which is wonderful um, and I have it pointed away from my face so it is in front of me over here I'm touching it right now 
um, so slightly moved away from me. Now let me just show you how that looks from a front real quick. So I have placed the light in a way so the light doesn't directly hit my face but I am hit by the spill of the light. So my nose right now is pointing straight at this edge that you can see right here. Okay, we are almost ready to go now. However, there is something that I'm not entirely happy with. Right now the light is very beautiful and soft on this side of my face but kind of harsh on this side and I, I want to create more of um, a softer shadow on this side of my face. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in and grab a reflector of mine. Be right back. I'm back and with me I have this small reflector that I'm gonna use to soften up the shadows on the other side of my face a little bit. Just, <laughs> just get that one popped up. Now. Let's see which difference that did to the overall image. Now, as you can see, I have to hold it up while I shoot um, just to get it close enough. And that's because it takes a little more for the light to hit the reflector than if I was using a speed light or a strobe that had a much powerful light output. These are constants, so the reflection is fairly minimal, but therefore this reflector has to go all the way up close to my face. Now, as I'm shooting, I am also trying to remember to pose. And <laughs> that can be a little bit of a, of a challenge sometimes, having to focus on your settings, on your camera, on your lighting, and also having a reflector. But it's really important to pose in a way that will flatter your uh, flatter your angles and flatter flatter your body and um, one of the things that I really like to do uh, that I took with me from back when I was doing professional modeling was to is to um, push out my chin a little bit and then a little bit down and I don't go down too much because I do kind of like the slightly tilted upwards look and that's a personal preference for me um, but the moment that you tilt your chin a little bit forward, uh, you create a really nice definition of your chin. And so let's just do a few more where I really focus on trying to pose more. And please bear in mind, as you do this, as you get more used to it, it's also gonna be easier to relax in front of the camera. Um, some of the exercises that, that I like to do is basically to look a little goofy. And I tell this to my clients all the time, so, I have to apply it on myself too. So one of the things that I do is try to relax my lips and my jaw and basically the rest of my face. So I do this. Ah. And you'll notice that it feels really, really good because we don't really, we're not very good at relaxing our facial muscles. And when it comes to photography, we want to have a very natural looking a relaxed expression in the face depending on what what uh, emotions we're going for and it's sometimes really it's a good idea to sit down and just to think about what are the emotions that you want to show in your portrait and, and when you do that you kind of move away from just taking a pretty picture and you create something more it's time to change things up a bit um, I sometimes have a tendency to get stuck in the same type of uh, idea that I have for a while and I need to kick myself into gear and change concept, change looks and try to do something different. So be right back. So we are back to where we started and I have now done a series of different types of self-portraits. And now you might have noticed that throughout the, the video, the backdrop changed a little bit, um, my outfits changed a little bit and that was just me playing around and figuring out exactly which style I wanted to go for. In this specific session, I, I didn't 
I didn't convey as heavy emotions as I wanted to, um, but that's not something that, at least for me, it's not something that you can just turn on and off. Um, but I did try to focus a little bit more on my posing, on making sure that my chin is pointed out a little bit and a little bit down, um, and I tried focusing a little more on the creative side. And as you might have noticed, I am really into tight crop portraits, and that's why this specific uh, range of, of self-portraits are tightly cropped. I really really enjoy uh, just having it um, f crop close to the face and it's something that you can see in my regular work as well. I hope that I've helped you get some inspiration to creating your own self-portraits and as I explained to you earlier you don't necessarily need expensive equipment and expensive camera. You, you can really just Use what you have. You can use natural light. You can use you can use uh, a lamp that you have lying around the house. One time, I kid you not, I used a contractor light to lighting a boudoir portrait session, and it turned out amazing. <laughs> so, the only thing that limits you is you. You just have to be creative. You have to see the possibilities, and you have to do it. That's really the only thing that's holding you back. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Let me know in the comments if I have inspired you to create your own portraits and even send me a link to your Instagram page or Facebook page so I can see how and what you have created. Until then, this is it for now. I'm Sisla. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you soon. Bye.